in that case, we can move on. Uh, when we were studying T5, we kept mentioning that you can actually mask spans of text from your, uh, from your input. And that's exactly this paper. So the idea of spanning consecutive sequences of tokens and masking them is not new. It was already present in the literature. And that was Spanbert. And why would you do that? For many of the downstream tasks, BERT is good enough. It's going to do a great job. But for some other tasks, it's not going to do that great. And there is room for improvement. One of them is extractive question answering. And what is the intuition? Let's say the question is which NFL team won Super Bowl 50? Your question algorithm, question answering algorithm, needs to take a look at Denver Broncos in a text. It needs to identify that Denver Broncos is type of NFL team. So it's a type of an NFL, NFL team. So it needs to take a look at the span of input text. And it is critical, such an observation for answering this question. The same thing happens for the Denver Broncos. If you separate them, then they don't have the same meaning as they would have if you put them next to each other. Same thing is for NFL team, similarly for Super Bowl. So masking individual tokens is perhaps inferior to masking uh, sequences of or sequences of consecutive tokens at the same time. And that's the idea here. That's the big picture. How do you actually mathematically implement that idea? And then how do you actually do it on the computer? Let's see. The masking strategy, we are going to go into more details of how do you actually mask so that you end up with a consecutive sequence of tokens that are masked. But let's assume that's a solved problem. You can take your sequence, push that through your transformer, and then it's going to give you the corresponding outputs. Some of these are going to end up being important. In the end of the day, you're going to be looking at one of these outputs. So you're going to be looking at uh, all of these, the ones that are masked. But let's focus on one of them. Let's focus on football. You're going to write down the loss of football. We know that you can do your mass language modeling. Just give me the football as an answer or increase its probability conditioned on knowing this uh, feature, output it feature. That one we know. That is what we have been doing so far. The new part of the loss, you need to tell it where did you, when did you start the masking when did you end masking? And at what position are you trying to look for an answer? So it needs to have all of these four information. Where, when did the masking start? When did it end? And you need to identify among these uh, four masks, which one are you interested in? And P3 is going to do that. And then you're going to increase the likelihood of your, the probability of football being the answer. You can do the same thing for every other word that is masked. And then there's going to be a summation over all of these. So that was the figure. What is the masking strategy then in mathematical terms? You have a sequence of tokens and you want to select a subset of those tokens and you want to select 15% of those tokens to be masked. The big idea is that you're going to iteratively sample spans of text until you reach your masking budget. Previously, masking was much easier. You would select uniformly at random 15% of these tokens now they have to be related. So you cannot sample from uniform distribution anymore. You're gonna do that in an iterative fashion. And at each iteration, you're gonna first sample a mask length. In this case, your mask length would be four. How many words are you gonna mask? And then you're gonna say, what is the beginning? But for now, let's just sample the length. For the length, you're gonna sample it from geometric distribution. Why is that? Because you want to keep uh, masking shorter spans because some of these spans are allowed to overlap in the end of the day. And that geometric distribution has this shape, choosing the span length to be one, which is just masked one token, has the highest prob probability. Choosing the spans of length two has the second highest probability of happening and so on. That's qualitatively speaking. Quantitatively speaking, you're going to sample from the geometry distribution. And then you're going to truncate at 10. So at maximum, this span is going to be 10. You're not going to be sampling all the way up until 
20, 30, et cetera. What is going to be the mean length of a mask per one, per one iteration? That's going to end up being 3.8 based on these parameters. So per each iteration, on average, you're masking four tokens. And then you keep masking until you hit the budget of 15% of your inputs. We learned about the span length. Now you need to know where to start. And that one you're going to sample uniformly at random, the starting location. It's exactly the same thing that you were doing with BERT. So that was this masking strategy. Again, it's the same story as BERT. There is going to be bias towards this artificial token to remove the bias to some extent. Out of those 15%, 80% of them you actually mask. 10% of them you're going to replace with a random token. And the other 10% you do nothing. But there is a catch. You're going to be doing this at the span level. And you are not going to be doing it for each token individually. What do I mean? If you decide to mask a particular token, you're going to mask all of the words in that span. So the masking is going to inherit the ones to the left and to the right. If you decide that one of your candidates for masking, you are going to replace with a random token, you are going to do it for everybody in that span. So it's going to happen at the span level. And then you're going to write down your span boundary objective function. There is going to be some output from your transformer. These are your featureized tokens. You're going to know that you masked from some starting to some endpoint. And this is the span of the tokens that you masked. S is the start, E is the end position. You're going to look at the features or the word, the features for the word right before the masking happened. So you're going to take a look at X4. You're going to take a look at X9. This is the features of the word that is immediately after the span or the mask span. You take those as an input, and then you need to know the corresponding position. Otherwise, you are not going to know which of these words you are predicting. At what location are you? Is the mask missing? Or are you interested in knowing the answer? Otherwise, it's not a well-defined problem. All of these are going to be masks, and then there is no way to distinguish between them. Then you're going to write a small neural network on top of these three features. How would you do that? You first concatenate them. Then you push them through a multi-layer perceptron with uh, GILU as your activation function. So it's just a two-layer feedforward neural network with the layer norm. That's going to give you YIs, and then you can write down your loss function, which is about increasing the probability of the correct token here, the one that was being masked. And for the input embeddings, all of these words or subwords, you're going to embed them in an, using an embedding matrix. You're going to use the same thing. It's going to be shared between the two. And at the same time, for your targets, it's the same thing. Then you can do your usual transfer on some downstream task, in this case, Stanford question answering. Because we were interested in extractive question answering, and the Stanford question answering is going to do that for us. The span bird, as promised, is doing the best because it is designed for such tasks. At the same time, you are not going to lose much performance on other tasks like sentiment analysis or uh, natural language inference type of tasks. Any questions about span bird? The idea is simple. The big picture is clear, but the details really matter. How do you actually do the masking? And then this observation is also crucial. Without the location of the entry in the span that is masked, the problem is not well posed and it's not going to converge. So all of these technicalities really matter. Any questions about span bird? Was everything clear? Okay, cool.